I just thought I'd uh, show you this. Basically, it's really to give anybody that's maybe starting out in machining just to give a bit of a tip and a bit of advice. I've got this wheel finished now and I've got all my settings on my lathe set. So what I'm going to do, before I put the radius on the outside of the flange here and the chamfer on the front, I'm going to leave all my lathe set up and I'm going to take each wheel off individually and do this operation first. Because now I've got my, my, my jig in my lathe, my wheels are repeatable each time I fit them in. I, I can take them out and fit them in wherever I am in my operations. So to save you having to keep reset all your lathe to do each operation, do, I'm going to do all my wheels on the tread first that way I'll get all my wheels exactly the same so what I'm doing I've got a tool I've got a tool set in, in my tool post very similar to that shape except it's not cranked it's just straight but it's got a 16th radius Measured that with my radius gauges, and it's a 16th radius in the corner with the cutting edges. So I've got that set in my tool post, and I've got that set at 20 degrees to the face of my work. So I've got my, my protractor set at 20 degrees, set the protractor on the front face of my wheel, and I've lined the cutting edge of my tool with my protractor to get me 20 degrees for this angle on my flange. So I've got my radius set with my tool, I've got my tool set at 20 degrees to give me this angle, but before I set this tool over at 20 degrees, I've set my compound slide at one and a half degrees and I'll use my compound slide to machine the the slight taper on the tread. So I've got everything set now and what I'm doing I've, with, my, with my particular set of wheels I've calculated that I need to touch on the OD which is 4 and 5 eighths 4.625 touch on with my tool set me me cross slide zero me cross slide to zero once I've touched on, then I know I've got to go in 4mm from this front edge to give me the correct depth for my tread. So, I've brought my tool now to the edge of the work. Once I've touched on the OD. And then... I'm going to put... I'm going to go in, go in, in chunks of 1mm at a time. So I put a cut on one millimetre, come in with my compound slide, and as soon as it starts to, tuck, to cut on the front edge, I zero my compound slide. And from my calculations, I know that I've got to go in 14.2 millimetre on my compound slide, and four millimetre in on my cross slide, and that will give me my exact measurements that I need for my flange width, for my radius in the bottom, for the taper on the flange, and for the tread. So, this one's actually finished. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. So, I've got my tool on the edge of the work now, and I've got to go in 14.2. So, that's 2, 4, 6. 8, 10, 12, coming up to 14, and when I get to 14.2, and I'm on zero on 4mm, because my dial goes in 4mm steps, I know when I touch onto this, the root of my wheel now on the flange, the front, my compound's on 14.2 millimetre so 
that's everything set now so I'm going to wind out and I write on my compound slide 14.2 and on my cross slide I've written 4 so I can remember and I'm just going to wind back an extra few turns and then I can take this wheel out now because all I've got to do to this wheel is put a radius on the flange, top of the flange and a chamfer on the front edge of the wheel 45 degrees and I can do that next time I put it back in so I'm going to do all my wheels like this so I get all the treads identical so this one can come out so that can go in now clamp it up and if you notice on these I've not machined the head off the screws yet that's what I, what I was explaining in my last little clip I've, I've made these cr screws that, that hold me imitation cast insert in I've left them standing proud so I can machine the heads off and it gets rid of the slot in the screws and then they, they, they look just like flush rivets then like that so that's in now I can start lathe up that's running dead true so like I said wind out to your zero what you've made wind in now if I touch on now I'm going to go in cuts of one millimetre at a time as soon as my compound slide starts to cut there I'm on zero so I'm going to take a millimetre off a millimetre at a time and I've got the count now 14.2 you just go in like that 14.2 one more millimetre to go in the depth and that's my finishing cut just getting the chatter marks out It. so that wheel is now identical to this wheel so I'll take this out now put my next wheel and so on then I can put them all back in again radius put the radius on the outside on the flange chamfer the front edge and on the others I can then machine these heads off the screws I've done that one look that will be prototype. So, just a little tip there, it may help somebody. Catch you on my next clip then. Okay, quick update on my wheels. I've, I've managed to get all my wheels completed now for this operation anyway. And uh, what I've done, I don't know if you can see this. I've got a double sided radius tool in which I've ground up to put my radius on my flange that's given me that profile and then so that's a double sided radius tool then a 45 de degree angle tool that put my chamfer on the front 
and then I just put a uh, well it was just first tool I picked up uh, obviously you've got to use tip tools on this cast iron carbide tip I just put this um, it's like a a knife tool with, with quite a big radius on just to face up the rivets to remove the heads of the screws that I put in like so so they're all here now finished uh, right the next operation then is while this jig is in I've got to I'll just take take this this wheel out just a second in this jig I have got to and this is how the book tells you to do it there is other methods but we'll stick with book from the center of this jig I've got to I've got to mark across on the center line one inch Put a centre pot mark, centre pot mark, and I've got centred in the lathe so the jig will be then running offset. I've got to drill on that centre pot mark a hole, I think it's 9 16 diameter, because when my wheels go back in and I get the centre line of this this here lined up with the hole, I'll have to put a mark on, on jig then my wheel will be running off set and I can drill the crank for the crank pin then and once this jig's set for that diameter of the crank pin all my wheels will be the same I've just got to make sure I put a centre line on and get the centre line lined up with the centre of the hole in the jig so that'll be my next job so I'll catch you on my next clip then